So there are two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. We have the parasympathetic and sympathetic division. Parasympathetic division promotes maintenance of functions, uh, conserves energy for your body, and that's why we think about this as being associated with rest and digest functions. And the sympathetic division mobilizes the body during activity, and so this is more active during like fight or flight response. And both of the arms of the, of the ANS here uh, dually innervate pretty much all visceral organs. And these divisions cause opposite effects. So we say they have dynamic antagonism. And uh, what this means is that they uh, can oppose the effects of each other. And uh, by doing so, they can actually help maintain homeostasis. So uh, the parasympathetic division of your autonomic nervous system keeps body energy use as low as possible. And uh, this is what's gonna help maintain um, sort of energy for your body. It's gonna help direct digestion, uh, diuresis, which is water loss, like through urination, and defecation. And we refer to this as like the rest and digest system. And an example of where someone would be like more parasympathetically active would be relaxing or reading after a meal where your blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rates are all low. Your gastrointestinal activity, activity is high. Your pupils are constricted and your lens are accommodated for close vision. You know, all of these functions here are actually mediated by the parasympathetic nervous system. Now that differs from the sympathetic nervous system because this mobilizes your body during activity and therefore we refer to this as the fight or flight system. It's more active during times of exercise, excitement, emergency, embarrassment and this is going to increase heart rate, dry mouth, it's going to make your skin cold and sweaty and it's also going to dilate your pupils. You're going to see that during vigorous physical activity the sympathetic nervous system helps to shunt blood towards your skeletal muscles and your heart it helps to dilate your bronchioles to increase airflow into your airways and then causes your liver to release glucose to mobilize energy um, usage by your skeletal muscles and other tissues of your body. So if we can compare the two divisions, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system we talk about as being craniosacral division. The reason being is that most parasympathetic information is actually carried by cranial nerves. And we can see that coming off the brain here as well as some sacral spinal nerves which go to pelvic organs. That differs from the sympathetic nervous system which we call thoracolumbar division because sympathetic nervous system information comes from thoracic and lumbar nerves, spinal nerves rather, which go out to sympathetic ganglia and then connect to their respective organs. Now uh, comparing the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems we see that the parasympathetic nervous system is the craniosacral division, and it involves cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, as well as some of the sacral spinal nerve segments. The sympathetic nervous system uh, involves spinal nerves T1 through L2, and uh, their ganglia are also different. Remember, with both parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions, we had ganglia because we had preganglionic and postganglionic neurons. Now, the ganglia of your parasympathetic nervous system we call uh, terminal ganglia, which are typically within the visceral organ, which are intramural or close to the organ. And the reason why the reason why they're so close to the organ or even in the organ is that the preganglionic neurons are short. I'm sorry, long, and the postganglionic neurons are short. And that differs from the sympathetic nervous system, whose ganglia are only a few centimeters from the spinal cord. And so you're going to find them right along the vertebral column. And the reason being is that they're short preganglionic neurons that then, that then merge into long postganglionic neurons, which puts the ganglia really close to the spinal cord. In terms of Raymond communicantes, we'll talk about that. We don't find that in the parasympathetic nervous system, but you do find it with the sympathetic nervous system. We see that parasympathetic nerves are typically uh, very minimally branched, whereas the sympathetic nerves are usually extensively branched. Uh, functionally, the parasympathetic nervous system promotes rest and digest, and then uh, your sympathetic nervous system prepares your body for activity, so it's more involved with fight or flight responses. Um, in terms of neurotransmitters, uh, your parasympathetic nervous system only uses acetylcholine, and then your sympathetic nervous system, uh, some of them releases acetylcholine very rarely, like for sweat glands, but for the most part, uh, it's only the preganglionic neurons that release acetylcholine, and the postganglionic neurons release norepinephrine, which is an example of a catecholamine. And we'll talk about these in a little bit.